when I got here this morning to have a coffee, dad showed me this as well. So let's just watch the run out on this gauge here. This is our drive shaft. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be able to, but sure it is. So normal run out, acceptable run out is uh, six thou, I think up to nine thou. So let's bottom this thing out here. You can see it already. There's zero and we've marked the end of the drive shaft there. Watch how much run out this has. 10 thou, 15 thou, back down to zero. 15 thou, back down to zero. So this drive shaft, or prop shaft, sorry, is definitely bent. So yet another item we've discovered that needs to be addressed, of course. Tolerances uh, like would be hopefully less than a couple thou when it yeah, was new. Yeah, but I said acceptable from six to from, nine. From six would be like probably could run it without a lot of, nine is the limit for mercury. That's what they're saying. If it's got nine in it, right. you can run it, but they're, I think at that point, you're probably looking at it maybe thinking about replacing it because it's going to take all the bearings out of the carrier and, Gear right. problems and everything right. else with the vibration right. and since this thing was getting water in it and it holds a positive uh, pressure test for like hours on end even when you're moving the shafts and stuff i would say this is like vibration caused when it's running it's right getting some so that's yeah that's why we think that maybe this had water the, had water in it so more fun so fortunately there is a place not terribly far from us a couple hundred kilometers core of the prop that they say they can straighten pretty much any prop shaft. So we're thinking we're gonna peel that one out of there and, and get in contact with them and, and um, see about getting to straighten. The issues that are talked about with straightening these prop shafts is in here where the two uh, prop shaft seal sits in the carrier. This outer part is stainless and it's friction welded to another piece of, of uh, shaft that's got all the machining done on it for the gears and bearings and stuff like that. And Which is sit a, a different different material different yeah, material. so it's made out of two different materials just for the corrosion out here all the stainless and then past the seals where it's protected then it's in oil and they wouldn't make the entire prop shaft out of stainless because it's difficult to machine um, for the stuff that needs to go on in here or more, brittle probably, or probably hardness yeah yeah for the bearing surfaces right. and stuff on that shaft. right and where the gears are running uh, so anything past the seal surfaces or even in between the two seals it's friction welded so they say if you put a lot of strain on the thing straightening it you could compromise that friction weld right but there's people say don't do it there's people say no problem you can straighten them so we're going to investigate that right because just like everything else on this thing this is not readily available apparently on a quick check so far it's like uh in la or i don't know whether the number's been superseded and that's something completely different but i was not able to find one anywhere today it's been a quick look plus they're like 500 dollars us <laughs> what's going on what is going on father well what are we doing just disassembled this standard or verado style lower case what do we find? What we find, what we, what reason why we took it apart was because we knew that it had a slight bend in the prop shaft, slight bend being 15 thou. Oh yeah, I think I, I think I got some footage of that thing spinning with the gauge on it. Mercury tolerances, they, they say you can run it at nine, but we don't want to do that. So we're, we're going to get her straightened out. She's going to go to Kawartha Props in uh, Kawartha, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And this prop is going with it just to get the edges touched up and make sure she's straight and the cup is right on it. It's a, it's a Fury. What is it? 24, 24 pitch, P. 24 pitch. Right on. So everything's apart. Carrier's out. Reverse gear. Everything's been That's cleaned up. Reverse gear there. Reverse gear, carrier, retainer nut. That's the tapered bearing that goes at the rear of the carrier on the prop shaft. Yeah. This, back. this is drive shaft, pinion gear retainer nut pinion bearing rollers right on. over there's the forward gear and the clutch stuff and all that stuff looks good everything looks pretty good yeah and uh, we're just cleaning the case here and uh, we had some of our own tools but uh, a company near us called extreme marine out in Nilestown, ontario were very kind and lent us 
a few tools we did not own to uh, take the case apart and uh, really grateful to them. Great guys out there. Go see Extreme Marine folks. Yeah. Need help with anything you got going on there. <laughs> Good guys, just good guys all around. <laughs> all right, so we got the prop and the prop shaft in here. Ready to go off to core the props for them to get both those fixed up. So hopefully that turnaround time is pretty quick and then we can move on to the next project. Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna, we took this uh, filter apart. This was off the compressor on your return side so it's under vacuum coming from the compressor that there's two of these filters one one goes uh to the upper bearing the other one goes to the lower main bearing on your crankshaft so if you have a compressor that's uh failing i don't know get that back out oh yeah it just pops out yeah just gotta work around it okay oh, you almost had it seemed to get her to up out of there but anyway you can see right there coming already don't wreck it we're gonna reuse it the, the metal debris that's inside the filter there and uh, that's a dead giveaway that you got a compressor failure happening along with the knocking and the uh, being able to spin it around with your fingertips forever so that's supposed to stop all the debris and small particles and stuff from going into your uh, main bearings and stuff. Apparently it works, I guess, but those need to be replaced and uh, all the lines gotta be cleaned out. So right now we're gonna do a little compressor autopsy. We're gonna pull the end cap off it, look at the crank pin, the needle bearing on that rod, uh, big end of the rod there, see what it looks like, and we'll probably end up pulling the cylinder head off it and see if there's that kind of debris there in the reed plate and stuff like that, because if there is, all the injection stuff, which it's gonna anyways, we're gonna be doing that to this motor, but it's in the airline and in your rails, in your injectors, so everything needs to come off, the rails need to be cleaned, the air injectors need to be cleaned, the direct injectors, which are the gray pieces here, in the cylinder head, they all need to be cleaned and, and tested. All the lines, every line that's connected to the system needs to be flushed out and cleaned. The uh, fuel regulator, air regulator, tracker valve, everything needs to come out. The diaphragm's cleaned, everything flushed and cleaned and before you run it again. Because if the injectors are blocked up with that stuff, she's leaned out and uh, kaboom. <laughs> she's over with so that's one of the deals with that compressor this compressor never broke it was breaking it was slowly disintegrating so it was coming apart you could hear that crank noise like knocking it and stuff it i think we've no, got some of that on video yeah no yeah. no compression you could spin yeah. it with your fingertips you probably forever. still spin it now yeah it's the other way oh other way but um it's um yeah it's, no problem so anyway okay we're gonna look at it and we're gonna see how much wear is on the crank pin or the bearing or what's going going on there and then uh, where the metal is coming from regardless it's failed so because the the bore could be scored or in the piston or whatever or there's gap in the piston rings there's metal working past that into the air lines and stuff going into your injection system so it needs to be right on needs to be clean you know right on so now we're gonna show you guys what the inside of an original compressor that's failing, what what it looks like. So that's to get you caught up. Uh, I'm gonna pull the, what would you call this? The, the cap off? I'd pull the end cap. The end cap, we're gonna pull the end cap off, so. So here's our new compressor. And that's the most current part number today. In, yeah. Uh, 2023. Yeah, which we had to get that brought in from Florida. Pensacola. Pensacola, Florida. Because there is none in, in the system in any Mercury warehouse in Canada that currently. You gotta be able to get her to lift up because it's got like a O-ring in it, right? Oh. There you go. Now you oh. Coming. Here we go. Here we go. Whoa. There's your problem right there. 
you can see it see the wear on that side yeah. of that crank pin there's what the crank pin should look like yeah and then you can see it probably from the side oh yeah you can see it on the side of it she's cooked so then i'm pretty sure that bearing's not going to look great either no well actually you know what it's not atrocious but um i'll let you have a look inside of here and you can it's not uh, as i was expecting you kind of be full of uh that but you can you can definitely oh see yeah that. absolutely she's, she's you can she's see the, junk. the wear on the she is junk on the side of that crank pin that's yeah. where all your slop and noise and that's metal yeah that's what's going to take your motor out <laughs> so that's the only way to know if you really are curious and you want to know if your compressor is bad or not the filter thing is the one way to look for sure like that that would if there's metal in it something's happening but pull the end cap out replace the o-rings if nothing's wrong yeah you need to replace these o-rings are available and you can put it back together and, and, and run it but that is junk like she dumb let me yeah. have a boo down the hole have a boo down the hole father and here's Here's the new compressor that's going to be going in it. Thank God we got one. Remind me again what we were never going to do ever. Have an Optimax on the back of any bass boat we owned. And here we go. <laughs> uh, that for a minute. But yes, the bearing, just from this, what you can see here, does not look toasted or terrible like the, the needles are all in it yeah i'm surprised actually but you can see metal laying. yeah there is i thought there was gonna be lots more in the bottom for yeah sure there's metal laying there yeah and uh now what a guy would need to see would be the top end of this the past the uh if there's metal in the reed plate if it's worked its way past the around the bore or got up through like, around the rings and out into here then for sure there's gonna regardless because this is had a compressor failure the injection stuff is getting clean because yeah it just if you're stupid you'd be stupid not to yeah it just yeah <clears throat> these things are hundreds of dollars now the direct or the air like they're and and what's gonna have failed this is the air the That's air the injectors air are more likely to have been damaged. Gonna, it's going to be putting metal into the air side, which the air is pushing on top of the direct fuel side. So it's putting metal right. into the right into the injector, right, and right. plugging it or yeah. whatever, uh, causing a failure, possibly whatever. Right on. Cool. Okay. On to the next. That's the inside of the cylinder head. The light away a little bit. It's just way too bright. Off the compressor and you can see the rubber laying down inside it rubber from dust and belt chunks failure. of particle inside there it's got a layer of rubber around the inside of it from it had a catastrophic belt failure at one point it shredded filled the plenum and other areas we'll show that in a little while but anyway that's no i think i filmed that before with yeah, the little camera that's what i'm saying we can that's it's there but this just showing you that it's working its way through that belt cover in the plenum and getting into the intake of the actual compressor as well so let's get in the compressor it's pumping it into your injectors <laughs> that's, what, that, yeah. that's what we're talking about here right this is a reed plate cylinder head so we're going to knock that off next so we can look at the bore and see what the top of the piston looks like and around the edges and stuff like that and uh, the back side of the reed plate see if there's any metal we're not seeing any metal right there right now but so uh, find out in a minute or two. It's a little O-ring on the back there that it doesn't matter to us anymore, but that wouldn't be the way to take one off if you were gonna try and reuse it unless you had the O-ring. So that's the back side of the reed plate. She looks gungy. She's uh for sure I don't see a ton of 
ton of metal. There's a piece of rubber right there but that could be off the gasket, gasket or O-ring or something. bore it's got a few scores and stuff in it pistons got a lot of rubber on the top in this case for us I'd say that's really good news, like as far as like still gonna have the injection stuff clean, it just would be like not smart to, to do it, but um, it doesn't have a ton of metal, but it does have rubber. So the rubber particles and rubber dust and everything is for sure, same thing, doesn't matter. Still gonna get in the system here, plug the injector stuff up or can plug the injector stuff up. So. I guess they have no filter on them this particular year. Air filter you're talking? Like air filter. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it probably is going to ingest a certain amount of rubber, but like it just, um, you know, there's like you can see actual chunks, pieces, small pieces. So that's just remaining in there now, but what's gone through it in the past, who knows, you know? Right? Mm hmm. It's more more uh, injector plugging type of stuff than anything you know so but yeah so the compressor's junk <laughs> just just simply based just so if you have a compressor noise if you can rock it back and forth and it's knocking like that she tells right at bottom dead center there would be even brand new which will check out on this one here there's going to be there has to be some slight amount of play but the amount of play that you will see in the video for that this one had in the noise it was making it was obvious there was so much clearance between the rod pin and the connecting rod bearing it just was so this was caught before it blew apart and everything exploded and pieces and shrapnel and stuff so this was this was an early catch so that that right there pulling that off is the only way you're going to know other than taking off the return filters that come off the compressor to return the, the oil that's being pushed in from the oil pump at the top back there. So one goes up the top, one's down lower, goes into the lower main, and they're identical filters. You split them in half like that, and that's your, that's a, that's a, for sure. You can look right at it and go, yeah, she's got metal in them. 